The American Trail. The American Trail. Blazed in blood, defended in blood. Chapter 2, The Northwest Ordinance. Seventeen eighty seven. The Northwest Territory from New York State to the Great Lakes was a vast, almost unexplored wilderness. Reliable maps and data about the Indian tribes were needed. Congress sent out scouts and surveyors to bring this information back. One of these men was Kit Bradley, an army scout and Indian fighter. In the early part of 1787, Kit arrived in Philadelphia to turn in his report. It was a cold, bleak evening. Kit rode his horse slowly down a narrow side street, looking for a tavern where he could stable his horse and eat a warm meal. Suddenly, ooh, ooh, ooh. something or someone huddled in a dark doorway. He dismounted and slowly walked over to the doorway. It was a girl, he saw. A girl, shivering, frightened, and exhausted. Are you all right, ma'am? Let me alone. Now, don't be scared. I don't mean no harm. Who are you? They sent you to find me. Nobody sent me to find nobody. I hear you're trembling. You must be near to frozen. Please. Please let me alone. Ma'am, I reckon you could do with a good meal. I feel warmer now. You had enough to eat? Oh, yes. I reckon we can sit a while here in front of the fire. Yes. It's nice here. Oh, you look real pretty now. With your blonde curls and your blue eyes. Hmm. Some color in your face. You, you, you've been very kind. Anna. Anna, you said your name was. Anna Ostold. You're running away from... Conservatory, oh, aren't you? But no, no, don't look scared. No. No, I'm not afraid now. You didn't like the family you were bonded to? They treated me like a slave. I was a slave. You had a roof over your head. A roof is not enough. I will not be treated like a piece of dirt. Am I less than anyone else? Does God think less of me that I should be a slave? Seems to be a lot of people are asking that question these days. Why do you look at me so? Do you ever hear of the Scioto Valley? No. It's in Ohio. My folks settled there. They're farmers. They came from Massachusetts. I was born on a farm in the old country. Anna? Yes? I have a mind to quit what I'm doing and settle out there in Ohio. Yes? I could get a few acres of land. It's good land, good soil. I'd build me a log cabin on it. Start a farm. Yes. It's big country, Anna. Sometimes it tries to scare you. But a man and his wife, if they had the gumption, could... could make out. There it was, the dream of an American frontiersman to take a wife and build a home. But first there was a job to finish. Kit had come to Philadelphia to see one Major General St. Clair. Here's my report, General. Yes, I'm anxious to look it over. Now sit down, Bradley. Thank you, sir. Oh, you're looking fit enough. Well, I reckon I still got my scalp. <laughs> Indians pretty hostile. I'll allow they're not so friendly. Oh. What are you planning to do while you're here in the East? Oh, I reckon I've got something to attend to. Oh, good. Otherwise, you'd find it pretty dull here. Dull? Bradley, I've never heard so much nobility of purpose in all my born days. Uh, how's that, General? You know, they're trying to push a bill through Congress. The Northwest Ordinance, they call it. To give the settlers in the frontier country the right to local self-government. 
the right to local self-government. Yes, that crackpot. What's his name, Jefferson? He wrote it. Local self-government. That'd really be something. They were strange words in 1787, but they sounded good to Kit Bradley. Then, in July that same year, the Northwest Ordinance was passed. The frontier was officially thrown open to the settlers. In short time, the covered wagon started to roll through Pittsburgh and on into the wilderness. Among the pioneers was Kit Bradley and his wife, Anna. What do you think of America now, Anna? It's so big. It frightens me. <laughs> You'll get used to it. Kit, I'm free. Oh, you're not so free. You're my wife. Oh, no one can hold me in bondage. The new law says so. It says there can be no slaves in this part of the country. I'm as good as anyone else. I reckon you are. Oh, it's beautiful. It's wonderful. <laughs> Kit built his log cabin a few miles out of Chili Coffee Settlement, and from miles around, his neighbors rode over to help him. Men and women, they all pitched in. More and more settlers came. And one day, a visitor dropped in to see Kit, Dr. Edward Tiffin. Well, Kit, we're a fair-sized community now, well above 5,000 male voters. You recall what that means? Well, I reckon it means we're about ready to govern ourselves. According to the Northwest Ordinance, we're entitled to elect our own legislature. That's something, Doctor. That's really something. Well, now, Kip, some of our friends have asked me to go and see the new governor. And, uh, well, uh, let him know we're about ready for self-government. Now, is that all right with you? And when do you figure to leave? The day after tomorrow. You going alone? Oh, I don't mind the trip. I reckon I'll go along. I can get some woman to come and stay with Anna, and she can look after the farm for a few days. A governor, you said. Who is he? General St. Clair. St. Clair? So you see, Governor, we all feel that we've reached the stage well, where... Well, Dr. Tiffin, I don't think we need to waste valuable time on this sort of discussion. No, I think you're mistaken. I reckon you are too, Governor. Kitten, let me ask a question. Please do. But don't you think you're just making fools of these simple-minded farmers with all this nonsense about self-government? Well, they're entitled to it. You don't pretend to think these ignorant settlers have sense enough to vote intelligently, do you? The law says they may vote any way they choose, intelligently or otherwise. Oh, what kind of idiotic talk is that? Governor, we think a lot of Dr. Tiffin here. I reckon he's our spokesman. I'm all the spokesman you people need, and all you're going to get... I don't want to hear anything more about this, this Northwest Ordinance. What do you say to that, Dr. Tiffin? Only this, Governor. I don't think you're bigger than the law of the land. It was a bad beginning, and things became worse. Denied the cooperation of the man who had been sent to help them, the settlers were suddenly faced by open hostility from the Indians. Kit Bradley knew that for the moment, politics must be put aside. Survival was now all that mattered. President George Washington ordered Governor St. Clair to take the field against the Indians. St. Clair and his troops were driven back in defeat. American prestige died. The Indians, intoxicated by victory, went on the rampage. One day, just before dawn, Kit Bradley, about to start work on his farm, saw a horseman approaching. Bradley. Kit Bradley. Get your wife and kid and get to the settlement. The engines are coming this way. Are you afraid, Anna? Yes. For my baby. All right, come. We're going to leave. died by the score. Their homes went up in flames. Their dreams in nightmares of smoke. <laughs> Don't cry. Don't cry. Our home. Our little home. It's gone. Well, I reckon we'll just build another.
another one. Now, don't you cry. But Congress did not abandon Kit Bradley and those like him. It appointed General Anthony Wayne to lead a strong expeditionary force against the Indians. Mad Anthony Wayne, they called him. And at Timber Falls, he met the Indians and defeated them. American prestige was restored. Peace came to the frontier country. Kit Bradley and the other settlers rebuilt their home. And under the leadership of Dr. Edward Tiffin, resumed their struggle for self-government. At Cincinnati, they convened before Governor St. Clair. Dr. Tiffin is recognized. May it please your excellency to recognize this legislative body and to consider our petition for self-government. I have not the slightest intention of recognizing any such twaddle. We insist. Insist. On our constitutional rights. The convention is closed. Governor, who do you think you are? A king? I'll put you in jail, Bradley. Kit Bradley, Dr. Tiffin, and the rest were not to be stopped by threats. Anna, we're going to hold our next meeting right here in Chillicothe. And if Governor St. Clair wants to stay away, we'll make out just fine. Why is he so against us? Men like him don't think people like us should have any power, I reckon. The settlers held their next convention at Chili Coffee, and Governor St. Clair made a point of being there. Your Excellency! Silence, Dr. Kevin! This is no time for silence! We'll be heard, Governor! Not by me, you won't! We'll go to someone else! I'm still the governor of this territory! Then we'll see somebody in Congress! I'll tell you what I think of Congress! Order! 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 The devil won't keep us quiet, Governor! I've had enough of this! I reckon so have we! I reckon we'll take this to the President! And I'll tell you what I think of him! Time passed. One day, Kit took Anna and their child east. A very simple man who had served his country so well, and who himself had written the Northwest Ordinance, was now President of the United States. Thomas Jefferson was glad to see this young couple from the frontier. Kit, Anna, be proud you took part in a great moment of history, that you helped establish a new pattern of life for the West. We are proud, Mr. President. We must never allow the will of the majority of our people to be frustrated by one man or by a minority. No man is ever greater than the law of the land. I reckon someone thought he was. Well, Governor St. Clair is being removed from office. Removed? For insubordination. Now, let me offer you some tea. <laughs> They came from the 13 states and from lands across the sea to build a new nation. And out of the frontier country, they formed new states after the plan set up in the Northwest Ordinance. As a new century began, and the American frontier was rolled back. This has been the second chapter of the story of the American nation... Brought to you by the Ladies' Auxiliary to the Veterans of Foreign Wars. Next week, another story to make you proud of this great country of ours as we follow the American Trail. <laughs>